Welcome to the fascinating world of traffic signals. In this video, we are going to be wiring up a preemption panel. It's really like a relay panel. Y'all a little dusty. Let me wipe y'all real quick. We're going to be wiring in this relay panel. It's got two relays in it. It's going to pretty much enable the preemption for a blank out sign we're gonna do on this intersection. And anytime this railroad crossing is activated, they have a little relay in the hut over there across the tracks. Now we're gonna end up tying in a cable. We're gonna do that in a future video uh, and then get it all tested and make sure it works. But it will enable a blank out sign and a preemption where it will pretty much flush out all the traffic here, allow the train to come through and hold up anybody trying to turn right and pretty much just allow highway 49 here to stay green so let's go ahead and get right into it now these typically come labeled and through experience of the amount of these that i've installed i could probably figure it out and make it happen because it's pretty easy a couple are going to land over on this d harness to enable the preemption should have a 24 volt uh dc side for this relay this one's only different because of this guy here. This one's a 120 volt relay. Um, but I'm almost sure it would have came with a wiring harness too, because nothing's labeled on it, but they would typically send a harness, or not a harness, but a wiring diagram for it as well. well let me dig around my truck, because the other week I just threw it inside the cabinet and then knew I was gonna come back to it maybe i hid the diagram so diagram in it would not be on that kind of paper ah it's probably got to be it right here typically would come in one of these papers here okay so as you can see is this just two copies of the same thing d connector da 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 yep for the most part you can tell where everything's gonna land and yeah pretty easy then i'm gonna leave this inside of the cabinet for anybody that needs to look at it later but our blank out sign is gonna land down here the neutral will just tie together on this should be a neutral the white obviously the hot on four at least what it shows here <laughs> and then our two conductor that we will have to pull and tie to that relay would, would land one and two. It's going to be a continuous 120 volt loop where their re relay, it'll constantly feed 120 volts around in a loop back to this panel. And anytime there's a break in that loop, it will then hit the relay and, you know, put the preemption in and do the blank out sign feed power where it needs to go it's kind of a cool system more on the the old school side of things but i love it i love relays and wiring up cables like this uh so pretty easy especially once you have a diagram without a diagram i would only have been getting pretty much lucky on which things i'd have figured it out but it'd have been lucky for the most part there would have only been let me look at this guy one cable one they really have it set up pretty dumbed down on this guy too what the lengths of cables of what where it should land but that other 120 volt one i actually need to see where that goes now nah jokes on me i mounted it i really don't like it there i'm gonna try to go up higher i think i got the slack on the cable and i don't have to make splices Ooh. our best to keep these cables from hitting anything All right, I like that better. Now, again, not trying to hit nothing with these cables besides where they need to go. All right, went ahead and cut the majority of the zip ties where now I can kind of just tug on the cable. So this guy on the far side of the relay, this is this cable here. As I pull a little bit, goes for it. We need DP26. That's gonna be on this block here, 26 down here. So. Uh, 26 up here, I mean. It 
Let's just try to get our D harness done and then our low voltage stuff is kind of out the way. Besides our 24 volt, but that's <laughs> got so much slack it ain't, ain't nothing to it. That's the 24 volt blue cable here. That should be the real long guy going all the way down the line. Which it is. That's these two kind of going out the way. Oh, neck's gonna get crooked here. This blue cable I have in my hand. Funny enough, already in my left hand here. This is gonna be going to our D harness as well. That's DP10. So it's gonna match up with this yellow cable. And I dropped it. That's added to it. Hey, y'all calm down, dude. I'm trying to listen to music. Rude these days, these cops, you know? <laughs> I mean, perfectly enough. I can get it. And it's jumpered right here. So really, anywhere you want to land on M10, 11, or 12, they're all jumped together. So this... This will pretty much just go to any of them. Loosening this jumper, putting some else on it. Ah, our low voltage and logics are hooked up in the right order of where they're gonna be. Pretty simple there. I do see that this cable here is wrapped around and I don't like that. So these cables out the way. Let's try to get my 24 volt cable completely unraveled. All right, back to it before I was rudely interrupted. Take these, throw them down here. Now where was a uh, blank out sign there? That's the future endeavor or logic and our cable for the break of the loop. That's a future endeavor too. Uh, did I already hook up the M11, which I did. I got it, I see it right there. Next step, we are gonna be looking at. Oh. Ah, well, we got a whole nother one here. So we have a 24 volt pin on this backboard is what I like to run this cable to, which is gonna be that constant 24 volt for the relay that it needs. Which I guess, let's go ahead and land our hot neutral and ground first. Ooh, try to get them where they're not interfering. You, you always wanna hook up your ground first, your neutral, and then you're hot. So, pretty simple on that end. And can it work off of hooking your neutral up with your ground? Or hook your ground up with your neutral? My apologies. Yes, but that's being lazy, fellas, dude. It is not that damn hard to separate your damn neutral and your ground. And I hope y'all can see this pretty well. But ground like this guy here let's go ahead and loosen up the lug again is seven eight nine those are all your grounds and they're all jumped together so you can pop that cable on that jumper tighten it sometimes when you loosen up the neutrals if, if they're stacked on the the blocks you can end up sending the can or the cabinet into flash or something on land and an important neutral will go into flash but so if i was to hook up my hot right now to this guy this neutral is going to then have um potential or whatever you would want to call it and you'll shock yourself so let's just hook the neutral up next call it real easy and we can go ahead and loosen this lug up I know my cable management could look nicer. 
Well, by the time it's all said and done, I'll come back with some zip ties. We'll pop that neutral cable in there. That's landed. My next one's gonna go on one or three. If I have enough slack here and it looks better on three, yeah, probably gonna look better on three. So, again, 120 volts on this guy, but let's unland the lug. Yeah. And we're gonna take our fork connector. This is where you don't wanna be touching any metal. And you don't want to slip, you don't want to shock yourself, but it's only 120 volts, so you can pretty much be as close as possible to it. As long as you're not touching, you ain't shocking yourself either. So there's our cable, it's tucked away a little bit. Everything looks real messy right now, but we're gonna dress it up. I'm gonna keep saying that because it bothers me. Messy cabinets really bother me. If you want to call yourself lazy, keep a messy cabinet. And there should be a 24 volt low voltage. Come on, find it. I don't want to read the plans. I may have to pull out the plans. Uh, ah. 24 volts. This uh, pin right here is what I'm going to want. Now, this one, very likely as well, that you'll send the intersection into flash. Connector on it. You may have already done seen it, and I'm trying to just get enough out where I can grab my fork on there. And that way, we didn't loosen up enough to actually pull that jumper off and disconnect our low voltage side of the cabinet. So, smart little trick there. You kind of push everything in together, connect everything together. You shouldn't end up sending the intersection into flash. Now, we do have a bunch of extra slack, but I'm gonna route it nice and neat. All right, so this black cable, and I don't know why it didn't just jump out into my head right away, but CP2 is this auxiliary breaker here. So that's technically where it's supposed to go, but that breaker is stacked. It's stacked damn near on both. Yeah, well, I mean, can't really go to the bottom side for it. Uh, hmm. More than likely gonna end up just landing it on the M block on M1 here to give it that 120 volts. I may leave all the slack just so I don't have to come back to it later. But they did give me like a soldered end and everything like this where it's a little bit easier just tuck it up in this guy. But I got three, four, five, five cables and three fork connectors in that. But that's really just being a constant 120 volts to it. So. probably about to just cut it put a fork on it and put this on m1 and then if they want me to change it to the auxiliary breaker and i'm almost positive m1 through 3 turns off if this breaker trips but i almost feel 100 percent that i wouldn't stay to this i'm pretty sure this is a cable that runs around and then connects to m1 so same, loosen this guy up. Oh no, a fly right in my eye. And now we got constant 120 going to where it needs to go for the time being, it should all work the same. I mean, they stacked that damn breaker. What do they really want you to do on that one? That is what it is. They stack both of them, really. I don't I don't love that to begin with, all, all the stuff. Feel like that should come out maybe they should have a terminal block and then the cables and like a setup thing like a terminal strip for the breakers they got too much shit landed and in, into each breakers i don't love that i've never loved that but the more of these cabinets this this used to be like one cable one or two cables each and now it's more and more and more going into it it is what it is but let's do a little bit of cable management to get this stuff looking nice and tight all right guys so probably the laziest dress up i've ever done but in fairness i'm gonna actually talk to my temple rep and just make sure that's not an issue putting it on that one maybe there's a reason if it needs to trip or anything it needs to trip this breaker um which is most of the time why they would say it landed there 
but for right now it's wired up ready to go we just got to get extra our two conductor cable pulled for the hut and then we got to get the other one pulled to this blank out sign so overall pretty successful pretty quick those things go in real easy uh done a handful of them i like them but they always do a little bit different sometimes most of the time it just comes with like one relay i want to say in my head and just flips on and then turns on the blank out sign. either or it's not too difficult uh hopefully y'all learn something and now if you ever got to install one of these guys into a traffic signal cabinet then you have the tools and the knowledge and the know-how to do so and y'all will see i think our sign comes in on gets shipped on the 20th so probably the end of this month You'll actually see us hang the blank out sign out here at 49. It's going to be for this right turn lane. You know, hopefully try to hold them up and just get activated when the preemption is. And maybe even see a little bit into the hut. Though typically we just contact out the um, railroad company to get that solved and hooked up in their hut. So either or, y'all have a great night. Have a blessed one. Don't forget to thank Jesus for the day that we have uh, because it is a beautiful day. Hopefully going to stay being a beautiful week. And yeah, appreciate the help, everybody.